Hi, our topic for today has some extremely interesting applications and that too in some very very interesting places. What you can see here is a kind of a mini casino that we've tried to create. We have some playing cards, we have some counters and I'm holding these few dice in my hand and we're going to talk about this topic which is permutations, combinations and probability and we're going to try and have a look at an application at how maybe concepts of this topic can be very very useful when you actually go to a casino. So let's look at these dice. Suppose we talk about rolling these five dice. So I roll these five dice and obviously I can see some numbers that the dice show up. The question here is in how many ways can we get a total of nine on all these five dice put together. I repeat on rolling five dice in how many ways can we get a total of 9 with all these numbers that are displayed on the dice. We'll come back and answer this question after going through some basic concepts of permutations, combinations and probability. And maybe then at that time we can also check how this topic can have a lot of application not only maybe at a casino but a lot of other places where you just need to figure out something about a chance of doing something. So let's move on to the concepts of this topic. Let's look at the basics of this topic called permutations, combinations and probability. Let's start with a very simple question. Suppose we have four people A, B, C, D. We have these four people A, B, C, D. And we need to select three out of these four people for distribution of a prize. So the question is in how many ways can we select three out of these four people so that they can be given a prize. Whenever this question is asked, we get different responses. I mean, two most common responses would be four C three ways or four P three ways. If we don't understand what this means, let's just wait for a little while. And let's try and understand, first of all, how do we go about it? So a particular person may say that out of these four people, three people can be selected in these ways. So for example, A, B and C are selected. A, B and D are selected, A, C and D are selected or B, C and D are selected. Hence, we have four ways of selecting three people out of four given people. But will this definitely be the answer? It may not be so and hence the correct answer to this question would depend on or the correct answer would be it depends on the purpose of selection. Now, what do we mean? We've been told that these three people need to be given a prize. So what beyond that? We need to understand whether the prize that they're going to be given is a consolation prize or is it a unique identity to the prize? For example, a first, a second and a third prize. How does this matter? If we say that these three people are going to be given a consolation prize, then whether we say A, B and C should be given a consolation prize or we say B, C and A should be given a consolation prize. This is one and the same thing. And hence there are just four ways of selecting three people to give away a consolation prize. But now if I want to give a first prize, a second prize and a third prize, then whether I say A, B and C in this order, or I say B, C and A in this order, these are two different ways of selection for the same three people A, B, C. And hence, now the answer will no longer be four ways. It is going to be much more than that, which is actually 24 ways of selection. So how do we try and understand this difference? This kind of a solution, which was based on a consolation prize, is an application of what is called as a combination whereas this kind of a solution which was based on a first, second and third prize is an application of what is known as a permutation. Now what do we really mean by this? In a combination what happens is when we change the order of selection what do we mean by that? Whether we say A, B, C or we say BAC or we say BCA they all mean the same way of selection it doesn't give us a new way of selection 
when the order of selection or rather when we change the order of selection and we still get the same way of selection it would be referred to as a combination however if we change the order of selection as in this case we said ABC versus BCA when we change the order of selection if we get a new way of selecting it then that would be called as a permutation hence in simple terms permutation is a way where the order of selection is important whereas combination is a way where the order of selection is not important let's try and understand these formulae so if I have n objects and out of these n objects if I want to select r objects such that the order of selection is not important then we talk about n c r c would represent combination n and r would mean out of n objects we are selecting r objects where the order of selection is not important and the formula would be n factorial divided by r factorial multiplied by n minus r factorial so if we want to use this formula and let's say we want to find out 8c3 then the formula would be 8 factorial divided by 3 factorial into 5 factorial. So this is how we use our formula for NCR. On the other hand if we want to find out NPR which would mean out of n given objects we want to select r objects such that the order of selection is important means changing the order gives us a new way of selection then now the formula is n factorial upon n minus r factorial and hence if we were to calculate 8p3 it would be 8 factorial upon 5 factorial so these are the basics of ncr npr combination permutation and so on and now if we have to use these formulae to find out the answer to the first question that we had asked when it is a consolation prize the answer would be 4c3 and if we use this formula for NCR we would get 4 ways however if we have to give away a first second and a third prize then my answer would be 4p3 and if we use this formula for NPR then the answer would be 24 so these are the basics of permutations and combinations having seen the basics of permutations and combinations which basically talk about the number of ways of doing something let's now move on to probability which talks about the chance of something happening so let's look at a particular event occurring now when I say a particular event occurring if I go back to the example that we had looked at there are four people a b c d and there are three people to be selected and suppose we were to look at what is the chance that out of the three people selected b is definitely one of them so that is in a way what is the chance of an event occurring where the event here is defined as b definitely being selected so in terms of the probability if we want to find the probability of a particular event a occurring then the formula would be n of a upon n of s where n of a basically means the number of favorable outcomes which means that if my event that I am looking at is b getting selected in how many ways will B definitely be selected that would be the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes which would mean out of four people to be selected if I want out of four people available sorry if I want three people to be selected then in how many total ways can we have three people being selected it would again depend on whether it is a question of a consolation prize or a first second third prize as we looked at some time back but this is how we would find the chance of something happening the chance would depend on the number of favorable ways divided by the total number of ways so when we look at the numerator and the denominator 
we are finding the number of ways of something happening which is nothing but an application of permutations combinations and when we take the ratio we are actually looking at the chance of something happening so this is the formula to calculate the probability for something happening having studied the fundamental principle of counting let's now look at an application in this example of selection so suppose we have five math faculty members four verbal faculty members and 10 students and from these available resources we need to form a committee of five such that the committee has at least three math faculty members so let's see how to go about this since the question says at least three math faculty members there are three possibilities that we can have the committee will have three math and two other people or the committee can have four math and one other person or the committee can have five math faculty members if we talk about this then the three math faculty members can be selected from the available five math faculty members in five c three ways and and hence we multiply the remaining two people would be selected from the remaining 14 people in 14 c2 ways or and hence we add four math faculty members can be selected in 5 c4 ways and one person can be selected in 14 c1 ways or the five math faculty members can be selected in 5 c five ways so once we use our formula and then find the values using ncr and so on we will get the total number of ways in which a committee of five can be formed from these resources such that the committee has at least three math faculty members once again if we notice and we used a multiplication sign or we used an addition sign Let's now look at an application of the fundamental principle of counting to an example involving an arrangement. Now the moment we say arrangement, it means that order is important. So let's look at this example. We have these seven digits which are available and we need to form five digit numbers. And the question asked is, how many five digit numbers can be formed such that they are odd? So if we now have to ensure that these five digit numbers are odd, these are the five digits, the last digit can be selected in only two ways out of these two odd digits and hence the last digit can be selected in two ways. Now we would say number of ways of selecting the first digit and so we keep multiplying everywhere we can select the first digit in six different ways because i cannot select zero as the first digit due to which i mean in uh, if we select zero then we will not have a five digit number and hence there are six ways of selecting the first digit there are seven ways of selecting the second digit and seven of the third digit and seven of the fourth digit a lot of people may be wondering how can this happen we need to remember if nothing is mentioned then repetition of digits would be allowed and hence you can have all the digits being the same since repetition can be allowed the only restriction here would be on my first digit which cannot have a zero and my last digit which can only be either five or seven because i want the number to be odd so if the question is as simple as how many five digit numbers can be formed which are odd the answer would be 6 into 7 into 7 into 7 into 2 on the other hand if we take up a question how many even numbers can be formed such that repetition of digits is not allowed so now if we want to figure out the number of even numbers where repetition is not allowed then how would we go about it once again we look at these five digits since we are forming even numbers the last digit may be zero may not be zero so if i now take a case where the last digit is zero so if this digit is zero 
we are taking that case first so the last digit is selected in only one way and since this last digit is zero I have six possibilities of selecting my first digit five left for the second digit four left for the third digit and three left for the fourth digit and the number goes on reducing because repetition of digits is not allowed but this is a specific case where the units digit is zero or if I say the units digit is not zero once again if I want to look at five digit numbers being formed if I leave out zero there are one two three and four possibilities for the units digit so I take four ways of selecting the units digit one digit is gone and I cannot have a zero here so there are five possibilities left for my first digit there will still be five possibilities left for my second digit because now I also have zero in the picture and four here and three here so the number of ways of forming an even number would be and that is given the fact that repetition is not allowed would be all of this plus all of this wherever there is or we add wherever there is and we multiply so this is how we would use the fundamental principle of counting in case of arrangements type of questions